All right. Hi, everybody. So welcome to our 2022 planning workshop. Um, we are just getting everybody in here. So please drop a comment. Let us know where you're coming from. If you have your pens and notebook ready, or if you have your planning workbook that I made specifically for this workshop, you could use it anytime though, even without the workshop. But I think it's especially helpful for this workshop. Okay. So Nice will keep, or I mean, Miss Kay McCoy will keep letting people in while I begin our presentation, everybody. So thank you so much for showing up today. Um, I love doing this. This is one of my favorite things to do. Courtney says she has her pens and her 2022 author planner ready. Yay. Hooray. I love it. So um, that's my favorite thing to use for sure. But I loved creating this new workbook for this workshop. It was actually inspiring me about things I could tweak in the author's planner to make it um, even easier and more like I'm right there with you holding your hand as you go through, you know, go through your vision, setting up your vision and building your year. So anyway, it gave me ideas. I had a lot of fun creating that. And I really hope you guys enjoy this planning workshop tonight. So um, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to go, uh, we're going to get started in reviewing 2021 very briefly, but in a very impactful way, we're going to explore our goals, really, um, def or explore what we want, define our goals and create our plan for 2022. So go ahead. If you have any questions, ask them along the way. I didn't do transitions. I want to keep this really easy, really light. And as we start our 2020. 2021 review, I want you to go ahead and write down what were your original goals. So can you think back or do you have it recorded somewhere? What were your original goals? And then write down, you know, what those goals were. And for each of them, did you achieve them? Did one of those goals evolve? If so, how and why? For me, one of my original goals was to publish like, or to finish 10 manuscripts last year guess what? That did not happen. My goal for my manuscripts, finishing my manuscripts changed dramatically because I created my original goals for 2021 in 2020, of course, as I was recovering from COVID, which I had long COVID. So it was a lot health-wise to recover from. It took me 10 months to get my liver as I was back to normal and to really, um, you know, go through a lot of the recovery from the symptoms I was still in June, just getting my liver levels back to normal. And there's a lot of different things that come with that. So when I had originally made my goals, I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> and that third pregnancy was a doozy. It was so difficult. It was very painful. Um, and every pregnancy is different. This one was very different. And again, very painful. I started ha having like um, Braxton Hicks contractions in the fifth month. So it was way too early. I was a step above bed rest and a little bit of stress, even a little bit of just moving around too much would send me into contractions. So my goals had to change, unfortunately. And especially that first trimary, trimester. So in the beginning of the year, I was not writing as fast as I wanted to. But the most important thing to me, I knew going in in the year that the most important thing for me after having COVID was getting my health back. So I, after so many years of practice and, and keeping in mind my priorities in life, I was able to deal with that. I was able to roll the puncher, so to speak. So I didn't let it freak me out. I didn't get down on myself. I didn't kick myself for not being on top of this, you know, finishing almost a book, a book almost every month. But I really thought I'm just lucky, first of all, to be here. And, but also that, wow, okay, I'm pregnant. The most important thing is getting through this safely with my health intact and with the baby's health intact. And I was still able to publish. I um, put together another anthology and I <laughs> still published and wrote and created things. And I had a beautiful, happy baby and I got my health back. And I'm feeling so good now, especially that the pregnancy is over and I, I get to have my energy back. I don't have it going to someone else. So 
If you guys struggled with anything in the past year, go ahead and drop it in the comments, drop it in the chat and let me know what you struggled with. And if it's something, especially that impacted your goals in 2021, it's important to say, you know, not just, oh, well, my goal was this and it changed and not feel bad about it, but in, in not using what we had as challenges, as excuses, so much as saying, there was this big thing that came up and my goals had to evolve with my situation. The more we can look very honestly and objectively at our situations and instead of beating ourselves up about it, taking those things into account, the more resilient we become when we face challenges again in the future. We're never going to have a perfect year where everything we plan comes to fruition, right? We're never going to have that perfect year where we can foresee everything that's going to happen to us. We can foresee every challenge. We can do our best to try and to plan, but we have to build the mental resiliency to be flexible, to go ahead and um, when something comes up, like once I found out I was pregnant, my goals had to change. And I didn't get mad about that. I said, well, what's really important in my life? How can I still live that vision and work towards my vision as a writer, as an author, while still putting my health at top priority? Because I am not going to achieve anything if I'm not healthy or if my health continued to decline. So think about those things and give yourself a hug, give your inner child a hug and say, it's okay. It's okay to have a rough time. I still love you. I'm still proud of you. So um, Kay says, I really struggle with wanting to be overseas again, as well as managing my work schedule this year. Yes, you learned so much, but you did phenomenal. You did a phenomenal job of adjusting, of experimenting, of finding your way through 2021, Kay. Um, just, I know because she's my accountability partner. So I have to make sure she's getting her hug and uh, I'm proud of you. Okay. So Kristen, 2021 was rough for me. I lost my dog and my grandmother. It really impacted my created, my creativity, motivation, and productivity. I can imagine that is awful. I'm so sorry. I would, I would be, yeah absolutely destroyed. So Jessica says, I have ADD and persistent depression. So I have already struggle, struggled meeting goals because of that. Uh, however, both my grandparents also fell severely sick and I ended up using three quarters of my writing time to drive up to Sacramento to, to, to take care of them. Hmm. It has been ongoing since June. I'm so sorry to hear that. Wow. That is definitely a struggle, but what's nice is that you still, still found time for your writing. Your writing was important. So even though you didn't get to do as much, wow, the putting family for first, I mean, is we have to do that. The people we love matter. And, you know, we need to honor those things that are important in our lives. Most people, Natalina teaching during a pandemic seriously impacted my writing and marketing time and my son's health problems. And I have gone for weeks without writing. One of my releases was such a flop. It really brought down my motivation and had me doubt myself as a writer. And I was so, I was so sad for you. And I want to send you all the hugs. And I hope I sent you all the virtual hugs, Natalina, because that cover is beautiful. I'm reading the story now. I love it. Uh, I wish I had more time to read <laughs> but I had to get ready for this workshop. So, um, but I'm looking forward to finishing it within the next week. And you guys, it's a fairy tale retelling. It's so good. And um, the kiss of the swan and that cover is gorgeous. Jenny, my goals were to write a trilogy, start an ongoing series that I can add to over a long time and a devotional. Keep adding in the chat. I love seeing your guys' answers and it's so good to um, share what um, everybody's been going through, know that you're not alone struggling. I think that's the biggest thing that can come out of these workshops is that we are not alone. We're not the only ones struggling. You don't have to put on a brave face and pretend like everything's perfect. Okay. We're here to support you because we're, a lot of us are going through the same thing. So don't be afraid of that. Um, don't be afraid of sharing what you have been struggling with. So let me pull up something real quick. In this. There we go. All right. So um, now I would love for everybody in the comment, in the chat to go ahead and share 
one, uh, you know, any of your successes, share at least one success, big or small, um, think very specifically, very clearly. And this is where you get to give yourself a pat on the back for the things that you did accomplish or for something that you're really proud of. Like if you get asked, um, wow, in not too long from now, what 13 and I can't count. Yeah. 13 days, 14 days, you get asked um, on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Let's just make it easy. On New Year's Eve, someone asks you, well, what are you most proud of from this year? What are you going to tell them? That's one of my favorite questions because it really helps us get back in touch with what's important to us, what's important to our feeding our souls. Um, for me, and I know for so many of you, getting um, a writing is something that feeds your soul. Being creative is something we have to do. Let's see. Crystal, I was featured on over 15 podcasts. That's amazing. Congrats, Crystal. That's huge. Oh, wow. Um, Courtney got at least one book released. Yay. Doesn't feel like enough, but that I remember most people never write one book. Yeah, at all. So you are phenomenal. I love what you're doing, Courtney. Um, Jenny says, okay. Yep. Okay. Jenny's, yeah, shares her challenges. That is so much. That is so much to deal with. And Jenny, you have been a trooper in pushing through and following your creative passions, it, despite everything that has going have happened for you. Phyllis, podcast numbers were good. Audience grew all year. Yay! That's awesome. Released two books. That's phenomenal. Natalina, despite all the turmoil this year, I published five books, both self-published and by my publisher. You are amazing. You're teaching and you still manage to publish that many books. That's insane. That's awesome and inspiring. All right. Um, let's see. Kristen says, I've always had a reason not to publish my book, but this year after all the loss, I decided it was time. Life is too short. So I bought my website, started an email list and an art team and put my debut up for pre-order. I've gotten such great reviews and it's been so amazing. Oh, yay. That's wonderful. I'm so glad you finally did it. Jenny um, released four books. One is my bestseller, and I haven't even been able to do all the promos. Doubled my income. Woohoo! That's wonderful. So exciting. You guys, you are rocking it. That is so wonderful. I'm so proud of you. If nobody else has said it yet, I'm proud of you guys. So write down that thing, write down all of your successes that you can think of. Go ahead and brainstorm what were your successes, big and small, um, very clearly and specifically write down what that was. I am so proud that of myself for, I still continued following my creative passions. I went through some tough times and I got back in touch with why I write and I didn't let anything that I was going through slow me down creatively as much as, or at least not stop me. A lot of things slowed me down, obviously. But I, even when I was in the hospital, I was pursuing my creativity. I had my laptop and we were waiting for um, the induction to happen. And I was working, just typing away on my laptop while I was in the hospital. And it wasn't in a bad way. I was really enjoying what I was doing. So I wanted to make the most of that time because I knew once the baby came, I'd be getting a lot less rest. So anyway, what could have gone better? Um, just if you can pick thing, you know, pick uh, one thing here, there, I don't want you to dwell on what could have gone better. Um, like for me, I think, um, you know what? I am, I'm just grateful for me. I'm not going to pick anything that could have gone better. I am so grateful that I'm healthy. I am so grateful that my health is getting better every day. I am so grateful that my baby came out healthy. I came out healthy. I just, I'm just grateful. Um, but the final one, what in your control would you change? So um, things like getting sick or getting in car accidents or stuff like that, that's not all stuff we can control. But if there's something last year that you think you could have or over this past year that you think you could have done better, this would be the time to identify it. So um, I think maybe if I would have allocated my budget for my contractors 
um, a little more wisely, I could have had better support as I got to the end of my pregnancy. So that is something I need to take into account this year is I want to be better at allocating my budget for my contractors and spreading out the work that they do in a very smart way so that I'm making the most of my money, making the most of their time. And um, I'm able to do those bonuses at, I love giving bonuses to my contractors, but um, I'm able to give those bonuses in a way that spreads it out over the year. And I'm not um, going too crazy with it because I will definitely. <laughs> so. Anyway, um, think about that, what in your control you would change if you could, and that's something you write down. Absolutely write that down. Drop it in the chat if you can. That's, that's really, really crucial. So that way you're thinking that that is top of mind because you're writing it, handwriting it or typing it, whatever you need to do. Um, what would you change? And that gets ingrained as we build our plan for the new year. So let's go ahead and let's go to the next one. So let's move on to your vision. So this in your notebook or in your workbook, this is a new page. And I want you to start a new page and start writing down why. And pick one of these to write in the chat. And of course, you guys are going to have access to the replay. I'm going to make it really easy to get to anybody who wants to be tagged. You just have to let me know. I'll make a tag list at the end so that um, I can tag you when the replay goes up in case anything happens and you need to run or your internet gets disconnected or anything like that. So, um, but anyway, so why did you start writing? Why do you write right now? And why will you continue to write? So Give those questions some time, some thought. You don't have to rush. I don't want you to rush through them. I want you to really get in touch with, um, uh, and not to be too woo-woo, but I love the idea of our divine self, okay? Getting in touch with that highest version of ourselves, that kind of, that our, our soul, you know, who, who are we? And as writers, writing is crucial to our self-perception, our self-identity, and, and, and feeding some part of our souls that is yearning for more, yearning for adventure, or yearning for a crazy, wonderful, exciting, or tense love story or, or something. We're like craving some world beyond what we can see in front of us. So I, I think as writers, there's so many reasons why we started writing why we're writing right now and why we will continue to write. I, I think I've had this conversation a lot with Natalina um, and so many other people, but I mean, if you had all the money in the world, would you still write? If you had money and you had, money was no object, would you still write? And I haven't had a person yet say, Oh no, I wouldn't write anymore. If I, money was no object. And then if your books never made any money, would you stop writing? Because the, the obverse of that is absolutely not. If my books never made any money, guess what? I'd still tell stories. <laughs> I would still write my stories. I might have crappy self-made covers, but because that is not my, that is not my skill. That is not my talent. Like cover design is not my talent, but you know, I would still write my stories and I would still strive to share them with everyone with, with the readers they were meant to reach. So for me, whether I made a lot of money or made no money, I'm going to keep writing. It's, I can't, I can't not write. It drives me crazy. There's too many characters inside my head, beating on the insides and begging to be let out <laughs> into the world. So, um, so think about that. Um, if anybody wants to drop in the chat, you know, why do you write? why will you continue to write? Yes. The chirping is my fire alarm. Um, my smoke detector, it, it started going this, this morning and I haven't, uh, there's no way for me to get out and get the stuff necessary to get a change. And my ceilings are really high guys. They're really high and I have to go get a ladder and all that stuff. So sorry, <laughs> you're not hearing things. I just, of course it happened at the most inopportune time. So, 
Anyway, if you achieved financial success beyond your wildest dreams, now this is this new question, get your pens ready. What would your writing life look like? Like on a day-to-day basis, imagine what do you do after you wake up? What would your day look like? For me, I would wake up, I would rush out onto my executive equestrian estate and I would feed the horses. I would check in with the barn manager. Then I would go out onto my veranda or balcony (laughs) and I would have coffee. And then I would write while I had my coffee. Well, my personal chef makes my breakfast. Okay. (laughs) So that kind of, and you know, spend time with my kids after I spend a couple hours writing and have a beautiful breakfast in a sunny room, um, you know, and then maybe take a break in the afternoon for lunch to go riding um, before lunch, during lunch, whatever. And I could, I could go riding out into my forest on my hundred acres and have lunch out there or, and then come back and write some more and spend time with my family. That would be for me, what my days would look like if I had financial success beyond my wildest dreams. That's what my writing life would look like. I'm definitely going to live in the hundred acre forest. (laughs) Oh man. Courtney says, as a kid, I used to make up stories in my head for entertainment. I was weird. Oh, you're not weird. I think that's pretty normal, especially among writers. And now I'm a weird adult that does the same thing. Writing those stories just seems like the thing to do. Being full-time is what I want for my life. Yes. So many people want that. And, you know, I, I like the idea of, um, a full-time income from my writing on quote unquote part-time hours, because I, you know, I have another young child now. So if I could, you know, work on my writing life, 20 to 25 hours a week and make the full-time income, that's where I think that sweet spot would be for me. Um, And everybody has a different, unique vision for what they want from their writing. And that's, what makes a goal setting and the getting clear on what that looks like to you. So important. Um, Jenny Carey says I would farm out all the marketing duties and just enjoy the writing part. Oh yes. I think we would all have the best teams. (laughs) Definitely. Ooh, a writing space overlooking the ocean. Yes. That would be so cool. I've always wanted to go um, with my husband to Portugal and get one of those like seaside um, apartments to rent for like a week or two. And we just have coffee and write and out on a balcony where we're on the ocean. That is one of my dreams, goals, whatever. That is, that's a target for me to have my royalties pay for that trip for me and my husband. So let's see, uh, Jessica, I have the craziest dreams and I keep a dream journal. Yes. I turn them in my stories. Ooh, that's exciting. That's such a good idea. The 16 book series I'm currently working on is actually from a series of dreams that I had that I realized were all interconnected. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> that is a great idea. That's brilliant. So now that we've thought about our vision, it's time to, ooh, did I go backwards? Yeah. Okay. So now that we've done that, let's think about our 2022 goals and how we can use 2022 to walk us forward toward that vision that we were dreaming about. Those dreams we have, the goals we have, me and my husband in Portugal on my royalties, or even, you know, like Tahoe, we really want to go there. That's just about as expensive or probably more. Anyway, so think about how you can set up your goals, your goals for 2022 to actually be derived from and, and feed into your ultimate vision for your writing. So I want to read them just based on that. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> we definitely need that book series. So go ahead and feel free to drop that in the, the comments, the name of the series. So um, think about your top three goals for 2022. And here's my challenge for you. I want to, I want you to list them in order of priority. So you can't just have three goals that have all the same priority. One has to be more important than the other, and the other has to be more important than the next one. So um, for me, finishing my three book arc of, and, and publishing my three book arc of my thriller series is the most important writing goal I have. It is absolutely number one. I want to get them out. It's been too long. 
Um, and I'm excited. I'm excited for these characters to be out there. I'm excited to market the crap out of this series. Um, so that's my number one. And it's absolutely my number one. So um, think about that. And if you are ready, go ahead and drop it in the chat. What is your number one goal of those three? And you can drop all three if you want. But again, the challenge, my challenge to you is to have them prioritized. Most important to not as important as the other two. Okay. They can still be important, but you should have an order of priority. What is the most meaningful thing? If you, you know, lop, you have to, to um, strain it down, kind of classify it. If you're into gold panning or anything like that, you know, you use your classifier. Well, let's sift everything down from lots and lots and lots of things and tasks and projects, because I think we have a lot of multi-passionate people in writing and the writing community and a lot of people with creative ADD. Um, so think about that. Um, but, you know, sift it down to just three. And then from there, pick your number one. If you had to pick just one of those top three goals, what would it be? Could you drop your um, top goal in there too? Because I, I really, I really want to see what's most important to you guys in 2022. So think about that. Um, when you're writing in your notebook, um, go ahead and make sure you're writing your why. So Natalina, let's get a little more specific. So when you guys are creating your goals, we want to be specific and and set goals or targets for things that are in our control. So that could be, you know, I want to submit to a contest or submit my book for awards, or I can, I want to um, finish my, I know a lot of people have, have purchased the SPF 101 or the Mark Dawson ads for authors, like, but a lot of people haven't completed that course. So if you buy a course, maybe your goal in 2022 is to actually finish taking the course and to complete that. So if you're in the ATA, maybe it's, you know what, I'm going to spend, um, you know, I'm going to take one course a month from the author training library. So it, think about things that are in your control so that you can better um, focus your energy on things that are in your hands, things that you can control. Otherwise, if you're kind of shooting for, you know, the, you know, the thing that I want is to be discovered, but what kind of energy or what kind of actions can I take to, you know, better improve my chances of that happening? So that can be ads, that can be marketing, um, that can be like social media marketing, that could be publicity. Where did it go? Okay. So hopefully it's done messing with me. So list any other projects, um, events, or deadlines you have for this year. Um, let's see. Oh, and um, Jenny, uh, make sure you change your two um, to everyone if you want to. So uh, list any other projects, events, deadlines, or tasks that are of high importance for you in 2022. Like for me, um, another thing that's really important to me in 2022 is going back to Las Vegas again. And, oh, thank you, Jenny. <laughs> but it's going back and doing um, 20 books to Vegas or 20 books to Vegas 2022 and having a vendor table again. And this time bringing enough of the big planners that everybody really likes. So <laughs> I ran out so quick. It wasn't even funny. And I felt bad because I was like, I didn't, I didn't know how many to order. I didn't know they, they'd be so popular. So thank you guys. Um, list those things. And then once you're done listing out those important projects, events, deadlines, if you have deadlines, if you're on a contract or if you have some pre-order set up for 20, 2022, make sure you're listing those out. And I gave you plenty of space to do this in the workbook. So um, that way you can pull from that space in the workbook to fill it into your calendar or planner um, for those of you who have your ultimate authorship planner or 2022 authors planner. So after you've done that, I want you to flip open a new page and think about the challenges that you can foresee in 2022. So if you are already pregnant or you know you're pregnant, something like that, um, just speaking from experience, you might want to think about how that pregnancy might affect your goals and your progress. <laughs> um, if you know that you have some big family events or that you're caring for family, Think about how that can impact your writing time and impact your goal progress. So 
Jessica said someone made a post that they had a sign for each book with a QR code. It allowed people to purchase the book at the event and then they will be shipped shipped it when the author gets home. Yes, I did use a QR code, but people weren't quite as excited about doing that as having it in their hands. So that's something I have um, to bring home from my experience there. So let's see. LL, Phyllis says my being pregnant would be in miracle territory. <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> but it was an example. So um, think about the challenges and then how you can mitigate them, mitigate those challenges, the ones you can foresee. And think of past lessons learned because a lot of times, and of course I'm a history major, so I believe in the importance of the power of knowing our history. So think about your past and the lessons you've learned in, in the years before this that you might be able to dig up those, those gems that will help you think about how you can better plan, how you can mitigate those challenges and how you can incorporate planning to make sure that if these things come up or become a problem, you're not going to be upset. You're not going to feel down about it. You're going to build your mental resilience or you're going to work around it and get those goals anyway. So that's ultimately what I want you to be able to do is to be able to work around any obstacles and get them anyway. I like to think of these goals, these big goals as destinations. So like if you're driving from West Virginia to San Francisco, um, the destination, if I have a detour, if I get stuck in P Pittsburgh, guess what? I get stuck for a day or two, but my destination doesn't change um, just for this you know, analogy, but it doesn't change my destination to get delayed or to run into traffic or to have a road closed. That means I just need to take a detour. I need to um, figure out how to fix a tire or I need to call roadside assistance, you know, ask for a mentor, whatever it is that challenge that comes up doesn't necessarily change your destination. Now, when it is like something where there's a health issue and you say, well, I wanted to publish a book a month, the health issue may come in and impact that and, and it can change your timeline. But overall, if you wanted to publish 12 books, well, guess what? You can still do that. Your timeline just may change. So think about like that. Think about um, your goals like that and it will help a lot. So your manuscripts. This is something I see a lot of times when I work with people one-on-one -on -one or I, I do um, like private sessions is that people say when they're getting ready to plan, well, I want to finish all these projects. Okay. What's your priority? What are you going to work on next? Oh, I don't know. And a lot of times, well, that is okay. If that changes, you should have a reason like priority order of priority and a reason why that title or that series is the one you choose as being most important. So consider that for me, that's my thriller series, finishing those or publishing those two books. That is the most important thing to me. Again, I want to market. I want to um, be able to, um, you know, again, market the crap out of those. I want to um, get them done. I have other pro projects I want to move on to. I have so many ideas. I am a cover hoarder too. So I have a lot of covers that I really want to give the stories to. I want to get them out into the world. I want to showcase the talents of my wonderful cover designers. And I can't do that if I'm still stuck on these thrillers and I just need to get the story book arc done and out um, the spring so that I can move on. So think about that. List out your writing projects you'd like to tackle in 2022 basically anything you haven't published yet. And then write those out in the order of highest importance. So when I finished this thriller series, you know, um, publishing in like February. So what I want to do next may change, but at least I already have my order of priority and I have reasoning behind it. So that way I can say, if it does change, there's got to be a really good reason why that order of priority changed. So what is your number one manuscript that you're going to be working on in 2022? Go ahead and drop that in the comments. Let's see. 
Jessica says, I have the first eight covers of my series made already. And I put the images of my first four books above my desk. I literally look at them every time I sit down at my desk. Yes, I love that. I love it so much. Yes, my cover designer has already paid for these books in my thriller series and some other ones I couldn't help buying some premiums for. But my targets, you guys, are right here. So when I sit at my desk, those targets are eye level. So I'm constantly... I'm looking right at them. They're in my face. So I'm reminded of what I have deemed, what I have declared as most important to me. So if you can have that <laughs> visual reminder, it really does help. Let's see. Um, Phyllis Duncan says, meeting the enemy book one. Anne Marie says, astrology book. Let's see. Astrology book, nonfiction. Yes. Cool. Cool. Kay McCoy, um, sequel to Dove's Cry, Jenny Carey, The Forgotten Gratitude Journal. Ooh, that sounds cool. I love, I wonder why Forgotten Gratitude. I like that. Natalina, a bonus chapter for my next book, February, that I want to have ready for publication time. Then it's a draw between two ongoing projects. Yes. Um, Jessica says, first book is Stolen Magic. Tracy, book four, Occasional Hero, out in March. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes. I hope you, uh, no, you will, because you're going to set up an awesome plan, Tracy. I know you. You're not too far away either. <laughs> so you're going to do it. All right. So once you've got your manuscripts, I don't know why this keeps going backwards. And once you have your manuscripts done, um, you're listed out in order of priority. And again, that can change, but have some reasoning. Um, but once you have it listed out, let's talk about that learning. Now, I touched on this a little bit in the last slide, but think about the courses you've purchased that you haven't completed yet or that you haven't touched in a long time. Because a lot of times we'll purchase something or we'll download something and we'll say, I'll get to this later. And then like, it's a really good deal. I don't want to miss out. We have the fear of missing out FOMO. And then we, we hoard it. We hoard that resource and we don't dedicate enough time to fully taking it in, fully making the most of our investments and doing everything we can to um, make those, make those dollars work. Okay. Frankly, um, how many Udemy courses have you purchased? Because there was that $9.99 deal, but you didn't actually follow through on like taking all the lessons. Um, how many people bought Writer's Craft 3.0 like I did and my learning plan, I have different things in my learning plan each month. I have like small resources, maybe two or three a month, but big things like um, Campfire and us and I don't know how to say this ace in Ghana, but I really want to use that tool too, but I'm going to dedicate at least a whole month to it. So think about those things you've purchased that maybe are just sitting collecting dust. And I, I, I've included this because so many people have told me, well, I bought this course or I bought that course or I have the ads course or people in the ATA, you naughty people, I love you. But how many times have I said, hey, you guys, there's all these awesome classes and walkthroughs and printables in the author training library. Have you checked it out lately? Um, or have you gone through my little ads challenge? Like I have a little mini ads challenge. Um, just to get you started and experimenting and learning and, and, and feeling comfortable enough to take the steps to get started, whether it's Facebook or Amazon or whatever. Um, there's so many resources at your fingertips. Absolutely take advantage of it. Put it in your plan to learn. So um, let's see. Uh, uh, Jessica says Mark Dawson's course. I purchased it, but since I haven't finished editing, I haven't started looking at it yet. That makes sense. Um, Courtney says, Masterclass, I renewed this year. I want to actually use it. Yes. The first year I had it, Courtney, I did not use it enough. And I mean, it's expensive. So this past year, I have used it basically almost every time I wash dishes, I have it playing, um, especially while I'm drafting, because it really keeps my mind a buzz. Um, I listen to Patterson and Baldacci and um, pretty much, I think just those two, uh, you know, cause they write thrillers. So Patterson and Baldacci, I talk, I listen to their talks and their lessons on the drafting phases. I don't care about the agents part, obviously, but 
I listen to the drafting phases and the revisions phases in those master classes because I find they they really help me fill in plot holes and think more critically about my story, my pacing, tension, all that stuff. So that's something I have incorporated into my schedules to make sure that I'm using um, so that money doesn't go to waste. That's, I mean, that's basically another pre-made cover. <laughs> Anyway, so think about that. If you have YouTube channels you love, um, books, I mean, has anyone else bought Brian Meek's book but, and blurbs but haven't read it yet? Because that's on my TBR and I'm going to read it before I um, publish book two for sure. So, um, but think about those things. And then when you have a time after you've brainstormed, I want you to take a highlighter and start highlighting, um, you know, one at a time, if you just pick one, you know, highlight it and then put it into your planner, your calendar, whatever you're using to organize yourself, put that resource, that top resource somewhere in your schedule so that you can actually make time for learning the things that are going to take you to the next level. All right. So I really hope you guys use this. I hope you take this and run with it. It can be one of the most instrumental things is to make time for your learning and your continued education, whether you're learning about crafts, marketing, business systems, building a team, um, hiring a VA, stuff like that. Any kind of that learning could be instrumental. It could be the key piece or one of the key pieces to taking your authorship to the next level. So um, Kristen says, I wanted to get that bundle, but I'm still trying to catch up on right published profit. Yes. <laughs> now there are two different kinds of bundles for sure, but, um, yeah, definitely understand. Uh, Jessica lifetime access, yes. Courtney, I have so many ATA trainings to do. Yes, you do. Um, Jessica, John Truby's anatomy of story. Yes. Yes. I have that one. Um, Jenny Carey says, Jenny Carey says Brian's book is wonderful. So is John Truby's. Oh, yes. So we have so many great resources, and especially in books about writing. So we should be using them. Anyway, so let's go ahead. And this is one of the first steps we do when we're about ready to map out our year. So I want you to, before you do anything else, brainstorm and create a list of important dates like birthdays, anniversaries, holidays that are important to you. If you are a parent or a grandparent who is highly involved with your grandchildren, you need to think about spring break and um, Thanksgiving break or Christmas break, um, uh, summer break, of course, things like that. Um, events, retreats, like the ATA spring retreat, which because COVID's still pretty crazy right now. We're probably going to do that virtually again. Conferences, 20 books to 50K. We're definitely um, going to do that again in no next November. Let's see. Uh, Phyllis says, could you repeat the name of the book about blurbs? Could somebody drop the link to Brian Meek's book about blurbs, please, um, in the chat? That'd be wonderful, you guys. Let's all support each other. So think about all these different things you want to do. Uh, challenges like the... Um, Brian Cohen's Amazon ads challenge in January. I think that's the next date. That is definitely the next date. Uh, so is that something you want to do? If so, is it, you know, written down in this list? Um, the reader attraction challenge that I do every year, that's going to be in June again this year. So is that, is that on your list? If that's something you enjoy doing to build your platform, um, weddings, family vacations, uh, if you have any deadlines or target dates, target dates, contest, anthology, um, Writer's Day just has their short shorts, um, NYC at midnight, they have several challenges that are really fun. Um, anything at all that you know of that could affect your um, marketing and your writing, publishing and marketing plans or efforts? So if you have a big release, and this is why I want you to do it, because if you plan a big release around the same time, you're going to take family vacation or, you know, you're a teacher and you're going back to school, then you're kind of, you're, you're, you know, you're scheduling a conflict and I don't want you to schedule a conflict. I want you to have those dates already down in your calendar before you start laying out 
This is when I'm doing the big market, uh, the big launch push. This is when I'm doing my pre-orders um, and, and the mar big marketing push for that. This is when I'm going to be finishing my book. And if I'm on a deadline, I got to make sure that I don't have anniversaries and birthdays or a family vacation coming up. That's going to you know, make me take time away from my writing schedule um, when I need that time the most. So that really helps when you can plan and things like that. So does anybody have anything big coming up that you haven't really thought about um, until now that could really affect your writing schedule? And what are those things that are going to impact your writing or marketing plans or efforts in right here in 2022? So go ahead and comment. I'd love to see your answers. Um, for me, 20 books is definitely, it's something that I need to recover from. It's something that I need to prepare a lot for. Um, thankfully, Ballets was really good about accepting my shipment really early. They didn't charge me extra, thank goodness, um, because they weren't worried about small orders like mine, 200 books. 200 pounds of books is nothing apparently. So I was able to send it to them early, but it was really stressful to try to figure out the timing at which to order and to send because it's print on demand. It was tough to figure out the timing to send that. So that was something that really took away from my writing time to, to prepare for that. And during November, we have 20 books Vegas. So it's really hard to do NaNoWriMo, even though I love it. My better NaNoWriMo is Camp NaNoWriMo in April and in July. I do a lot better during those because, well, it's not 20 books Vegas. And I don't really plan other things during those months. So think about anything that, you know, you do that takes a lot of time on the front end or back end or both um, that can impact your schedule. So let's see. Um, Jessica says 20 books was nuts. I wanted to make yours, but I was helping with the AV team. I didn't get to make any outside my assigned room. I completely understand. Oh, but bless you for being part of the AV team. I know they had a tough job. Uh, Jenny says, yes, 20 books. I don't think, think I'll be doing nano next year, at least not officially because of it. Yeah, I started, but it was totally scrapped. Um, my energy was totally wiped from not a bad way, but totally wiped out from 20 books. So I needed some time to, to um, re-energize, recharge. Kristen, my organization hosts an annual conference at the end of February. So January and February are always crazy busy. That's usually when my planning efforts die off. So maybe you should tell one of your um, robotic assistants, your AI, you know, either S-I-R-I or A-L-E-X-A -E to remind you um, to, you know, at the end of February, open my planner, remind me to open my planner on March 1st at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. or whatever you do. So that's, so you can say, you know what, I know that January and February suck for me. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take it easy. I might sketch out some things, but I'm not going to really take it seriously until February is over. Okay. I know for me, um, February and March are really difficult for me. I think it's, I almost think it's sad, like seasonal effective. Yeah, I get really down. I get really isolated and um, I come out of it just before our spring retreat, thankfully. And, but I know those times are really down for me, really low energy. So I don't challenge, I don't, I don't schedule a lot of challenges or live events because I know that I need more me time and self care to get through those tough months. So planning around your own energy too, can be incredibly helpful. If you know, you have some tough months, if you know, like energy wise, there's certain months of the year that you struggle then you can plan around that. Don't plan to try to finish a book a month in over two months that like, you know, you have consistently low energy. So let's see. Tracy says, totally me. My new year is in March. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I arrived on Saturday, Jessica, and it was so helpful. Even just the date difference between arriving on Sunday and Saturday is massive. All right. So now that we've done that, um, I want you to draw 12 boxes, one for each month of 2022. If you have the workbook, 
work, workbook, you don't have to draw anything. <laughs> um, in shorthand, I want you to really, really briefly write out each box and add your important dates from the previous exercise. So we start by adding those dates into each month. Okay. And then after that, we fill in what needs to happen each month. And, and really quick, after you add your dates, your important dates and deadlines, also add those months like, you know, January, February, or for me, February, March, or um, November, go ahead and write like low energy or this one event consumes most of my energy. So no, like write it bigger. Okay. Cause you're going to have a lot of months. You're going to have a few things that need your attention. But if you have like one big thing in a certain month, write it bigger so that you can't stuff a lot in there. And I make these smaller. I let allow these boxes to be smaller in your workbook because I want you to have to think really carefully about making choices that are meaningful to your goals for the year. You can't stuff in everything and do everything very well. You have to really get laser focused about what you want to do well and prioritize that. So that's why you don't get a ton of space to write out everything. I want you to make those hard choices. Okay. So write that out. Think really critically, really critically, be very intentional about what your focus is going to be each month. Okay. And then this is what it should look like. If you have the workbook, you'll see this, you know, January, February, these nice little boxes, you have plenty of room to write the big stuff in a couple of tasks. Now, November is basically just 20 books and October is 20 books prep. Um, and, and maybe Foxtober, if I can schedule it all out or a month ahead again. I love Foxtober. That's where in Sprints and Spirits, we just spend the month um, prepping for NaNoWriMo by reading um, Chris Fox books. I love Chris Fox's books. So think about that. Go ahead and do that. Does anybody have a month where they know they're just going to have to focus on one thing? And say no, like really limit your yeses and say no to other things. So comment in the chat. Let me know what that thing is, or what that month is. And if you hear in the background, my, um, my seven-year-old is entertaining the baby right now. She's so sweet. She's so good with her little sister. I'm so proud. <laughs> All right. We need to jump ahead while you guys are typing. All right. So once you've done that, we're going to start mapping out our quarters. Now, again, if you have the workbook, I made this easy for you. Um, uh, Kristen says, I'm enjoying the kid noises better than the dying smoke detector. <laughs> I know. I, oh, it just happened at the worst time. So um, in the workbook, I have this mapped out. I made it really easy for you. Now, if you're working in a notebook, give yourself a clean page to work from and split it into thirds, January, February, March, okay? And then it, within those thirds, I want you to have space for four different categories, creative, so your writing projects, and editing, um, marketing, business, and learning. So in these categories, you're going to map out each quarter with all the stuff we wrote out about your deadlines, you know, what projects are most important to you. And, um, you know, a lot of the other events and, and dates and important holidays that are going to come up. So, um, but keep your learning to like a single line. You shouldn't be really stuffing your learning unless you know, like, I just really need to buckle down and do the ads course and, whatever, what have you, but really that should be a single line for per month. Then write out your focus and tasks for each category for the month of January based on your year map, January, February, and March. So it should look like something like this. Now, can everybody see that? Please let me know if you can see that. Yay. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Tracy. Now, see, it's nice, organized, neat, and I think I made it pretty simple to break things up so that you can easily categorize your tasks. 
You can put your tasks, your focus into buckets. What is your creative project or your creative focus in January, in February, and March? What kind of marketing are you going to be doing in January? Or do you have a marketing focus? Business, are you, um, you know, wrapping up 2021 and preparing to send all of your numbers to your accountant? That's what I'm doing, <laughs> you know, um, or uh, you're learning. What are you going to be doing for your learning? You're reading a book, taking a course, taking an ATA class or walkthrough. What are you going to be doing? Um, February, um, maybe you'll be for marketing. You'll be doing, if you're in the ATA, the, um, and I'm not really trying to plug it too much. I'm just giving quick examples, but in the ATA, I really want to do um, uh, kind of Valentine's day book magazine thing. And, that's something that we'll be all marketing together. So what is your focus going to be for all these different months for these categories? Then it's like, okay, I see what I need to be doing this month, how I need to make those hard decisions and where I need to, is that a page in the planner? Uh, not yet, but it's probably going to be uh, when I update the planner, I'll update it with the ultimate first, but this is in the workbook that I made specifically for this workshop. Um, so uh, I made it super cheap on Etsy, but um, I, I really loved breaking it down like this so that we can say, okay, this just makes it so easy. You guys, I played with this. This is something I have practiced and played with and um, messed around with to try to tweak to perfection, to break down your tasks, give you a bird's eye view, kind of zoom in a little bit. And then you can extract this information from this map, this quarterly map and drop it into your calendar or planner. So you say, okay, now I know what I have to do. I shouldn't have to ask what do I do next? Because I've got my map here. I know what my marketing focus should be in March. Uh, if my book is released on April 1st, April Fool's Day, <laughs> I should be spending March preparing for that and teasing it and doing my cover reveal and pushing for pre-orders and doing newsletter swaps, whatever, what have you. What am I going to be doing in March to prepare for release in April? So Think about that. This is your way to visualize where to place all of those things. Okay. So tell me if you guys like that. Um, I'm really pleased with it. <laughs> I'm really tickled by it, obviously. But tell me in the chat if you guys like this as much as I do. <laughs> I will pull up this thing real quick. There we go. There. Yay, yay, Jenny, thank you. Yay, Kristen, awesome. I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> I really put a lot of care into creating this. So I, I'm so glad it can be helpful, you guys. All right. So once you've done your quarter one and, um, you know, this is something you can continue on um, if you need to, if you need more time, I definitely want you to think carefully. I don't want you to rush through, but as long as you have the bones down, then you can continue this work, um, with a nice glass of wine or a nice cup of tea or whatever you prefer. Um, and, and you can get more in depth and in detail as you need, um, beyond this workshop even. So yay, Kristen. Um, Kay says, it's the learning and marketing for me. Yes, I think sometimes we um, can skip over those things and just kind of market on the fly. And we don't always do our best marketing if we're kind of trying to figure out the last minute what to do, right? Who has tried to promote their book like last minute? Okay, I think we've all done that. And at the last minute, I'm like, oh, I need to throw something together for a launch. And then it's like, oh, man. <laughs> that didn't go quite as well as I hoped it would. I, when I planned to do it six months ago and I forgot about what I was supposed to do. Um, the <laughs> okay, slowly raise his hand. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, drop in the chat if you had an experience like that, because it's so helpful to know that you're not the only one. So what I like to do is once you have these things in there, you can tell your AI like, hey, remind me on this date to do X, Y, Z. So you can back up what you have in your analog planner or calendar with your smart technology. 
okay like <laughs> have it have those both of those methods backing you up and it's a lot harder to miss those dates all right so once you've done that i want you to repeat the process for quarter two for quarter three and for finally for quarter four in november Oh, that's a toughie. There's so much going on. I, I like, for example, I couldn't believe it when I got invited to contribute to um, Writers Craft 3.0. And wow, I hope I get to do that again. <laughs> so if so, then that means that's going to be a big marketing focus. Now, I actually have to really, November is just so busy for me. And it's funny because I really only like cooking during Thanksgiving and Christmas. And yet I have so much in November. Anyway, so let's check in real quick. Now that you've seen those, you've taken your ultimate vision, you've pulled it down to your 2022, you've dropped it into your map, and then you've even gotten more detail than your quarters. How do you feel about the work we've done together so far? How does it feel to kind of do these things, to break it down into quarter, to break it down into categories, creative, marketing, business, and um, learning. How does it feel to put that together for each month and the quarter? And then raise your hand if you want to say something about it. Because <laughs> I can see that. And that's a neat little tool we can use as well. <laughs> Phyllis says, it feels like my old government job. <laughs> and Maria says, very helpful. Case is feeling motivated to kick off 2022. Yes, awesome. Yes, I love it. It got me so jazzed about the possibilities inherent in the, you know, the idea of the new year. Kristen says, yes, makes planning feel a little less overwhelming. Awesome. That's my whole goal, Kristen, because it's like, if we just take things one little step at a time, you know, just like one word after, a, you know, one word after another, step by step, we can bring it all together. It makes it so much easier to plan, so much easier to approach planning. It doesn't have to be hard. It can be flexible to your needs, your unique situation, especially when we take it in little bites like this. And because it, there's no one way for everybody. There's just not, even for planning. Like I want everything to be flexible to your needs. So um, Jessica says, I learned about Gantt charts in college and they do something similar. Yes, I love it. I love Gantt charts. If I can make it um, better fit into the planner, I would have Gantt charts, but I've played with it and it doesn't really turn out well in the planner, in the physical version. So we're not doing that. I would love to do an app one day. I'm actually, it's part of my schedule um, when I'm not doing like end of year stuff, quarter four stuff is really, really busy for me. But when I'm not doing quarter four stuff, I am researching how to build my own app. Um, and it would basically give you a digital way to have like the planner, but reminding you and keeping you on track with your goals and with your creative business marketing and learning um, tasks and goals. So anyway, um, three cheers for an app coming from Audrey, <laughs> um, hopefully this summer. <laughs> so, but yes, Gantt charts would be awesome. Um, and I'm very inspired by them. Natalie says, I started doing this, uh, something like this a while back, and it's very helpful. I'm not being interactive, but I'm about to fall asleep. I completely understand. I don't blame you for being tired. Um, yeah, this week before Christmas in elementary school is crazy. I can only really imagine. <laughs> um, Jenny says, this is very helpful. My poor firstborn had to do every, I really want to know the best way to fill out every page of the planner, but I know it has to be done according to my needs. Yes. And we do have a um, author planning out uh, an author planner workshop coming next week. I'm so excited. It's so much fun. So much to talk about. I can't wait to build my new target, my new target sheets to go on my wall. I make them really pretty and I put a, I, I have them printed at office depot. So it's on the nice paper. Um, and that kind of reinforces to me, what's important to me and keeps me motivated. But all of this planning has me and doing this myself 
really has motivated me, got me all really excited about starting the new year. Kristen says an app would be so helpful. Yes, I am. I am digging into all the resources and trying to find um, a way to do it independently of uh, SAAS, you know, software as a service, because um, I don't want if that platform goes down to lose the app. So um, that may, means it's a little more difficult to find the right technology for me to put out an app. Let's see. Kay says, here, here, an ultimate author's planner app. Sounds amazing. Yes. Jessica says, I use the basic system idea to create task lists to help me reach my goals. It helps me to see the checklist for all the little tasks that make up the big goal. And it helps me feel like I have accomplished something, even if I haven't reached the goal. Yes. We've taken the steps. It's like hitting city by city, like, woohoo, we made it to Pittsburgh. Woohoo, we made it to Columbus or woohoo, we made it to Chicago. We're on our way, wherever, whatever way you take it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not driving across country with all these kids, but um, the idea is still there where it gives us milestones. Those tasks that lead up to completing a larger goal all can feel like progress, you know, bam, I'm hit. I hit that green light. I hit that one. I hit that one. So it can make you feel, it can actually help you build momentum as well as feeling like you're getting progress, but all those little things, that's why, you know, you read these books or even articles from uh, Navy SEALs or people who are in the military says, well, why do you start the day with making your bed? Because it's a small win. It's a small win. It's a small accomplishment. It's a small piece of discipline that feeds into the larger whole. Okay, so um, I hope this has felt really good. And what you've created so far, that is your roadmap. The overall 12-month view and then quarter by quarter, that is your roadmap. You guys, you have done a fantastic job here. I want you to know that everything you've been thinking about and working on here matters for how you tackle 2022, because everything is not going to be handed to you. You know that. And in order to have a different year than we had last year or the year before, we have to be different. If we want it to be better, we have to do better, right? That's the challenge. The minute we get comfortable and we're not motivated to do something drastically different, then, you know, we're not going to be drastically different, okay? Um, the hardest thing is to be uncomfortable in trying to change our lives for the better, trying to reach for these big dreams, these big goals, uh, doing what we've always done. That's not going to get us there. Okay. It sucks, but really our best growth comes out of being uncomfortable. I truly believe that, but I wanted you to guys to have this and to have this replay and to have the outline for filling out in your notebook, if you want, or if you have the workbook, you get to fill this in and you get to lay out your roadmap from, you know, the East coast to the West coast, from wherever you are to wherever you want to go. And, you know, let's stop the analogy, but wherever you are to wherever you want to go, this is your roadmap for 2022. This is how you're going to get there. These are the things you need to do to make sure that you're not just saying, I want to do this stuff. You're taking the actions that are going to back up those words, those words that mean so much to us because we're writers and that's our souls on the line, right? <laughs> so stay flexible though. No matter what, I want you to build your mental resilience when things do not go to plan. I want you to just say, you know what? Okay, how do I adjust? How do I flex so that I can... I can adjust. I can still do what is meaningful to me in my life and, and my identity. And I can, I can still write. I can still be creative. I can still pursue my passions, even if it's not at the pace that I wanted to. Because that's typically what really happens is people want to write faster. They want to publish faster. And then when they don't do that, they get down on themselves and forget that, like Courtney said, most people say they want to write a book and never write a book. And you guys are doing that. <laughs> you all are doing that. So remember that everything can change. Um, and that's why I always encourage the monthly and quarterly reviews and planning sessions. That's why that's in the author's planner and the ultimate authorship planner is because that is critical from one month to the next, even one week to the next, one day to the next. 
things can change drastically. We just don't know the curveballs life has in store for us. So we need those reviews to sit back, sit with our goals, sit with the way things went or whatever happened, what challenges we faced, and then say, okay, based on that, this is what needs to happen now. So I want you to take what we've done so far, take your, your January overview and your January quarter and map out, plug in all those dates, plug in all those events and flip back to those pages. If you have your workbook or in your notebook and review those detailed boxes, fill in your focus for each week and then map out what you're going to work on on the task you listed for the creative, for the marketing, for the business and learning areas. Now, if you have a full-time job or you're a full-time primary caretaker, if um, you know, you're a full-time student, then you know, you might want to just list one thing a day that you can do to honor your focus for any of those areas. So I'll give you, here's, we got, we got the calendar here. And of course it's in your planner. If you have a calendar, um, even if you want to use yours digitally and Apple and Google, whatever, um, you can do that, but go ahead and make a nice big line and say, my focus, my number one focus for this week is writing or editing or taking that ads course or whatever, or you can sit down one day at a time on Sundays. I learn. on Mondays. I, you know, reconcile all my expenses from 2022 so that, or 2021 so that in 20 or in uh, February, I can just hand over all my numbers to my accountant on Tuesdays through Fridays. I am just writing. Okay. And then on Saturdays, what am I doing? I'm just, having fun with my family. You can, there's so many different ways to plan and you can find something that works just the way you need it to work for your life, for your priorities, your focus. Natalina, oh, okay, gotcha, Natalina. Yes, we'll see you tomorrow. And I hope you have a great night, Natalina, bye. So let me know, you guys, what is your focus gonna be for January? What's your number one? I would love to see that in the chat as your looking at how you're going to plan out your January, how you're going to hit that first, that first, what, uh, 31 miles of your road to reaching your 2022 goals. You know, what does that map look like for you? How are you going to map that out to make sure that you're still getting the self-care that you need? You're, you're pursuing your creative passions. You're not scheduling too much in when you know you're going to have um challenges if you know january is a down month so let's see k says finish writing doves cry too Kristen says marketing my new book and building my reader base awesome um phyllis says taking a social media marketing break to clear my head for the rest of the year yeah good reset that'll do you good All right for me it's um finishing book three that's the number one thing for me um but i'll be breaking up my days partly into um, uh, editing, editing book two while writing book three and stuff like that. We'll see. So I'm going to do my monthly review first. <laughs> so, but build your roadmap, build what you know you need to put in here. You can either work, you know, Mondays I do this and Sundays I do that, or you can say this week I'm working on that, this week I'm working on this, or in the mornings. I write in the afternoons, I work on my marketing. On Fridays, it's all business. I'll do all my admin tasks. I'll assign tasks in Asana to my contractors. I'll assign tasks to my VA. Um, whatever you're gonna do, you know, go ahead and sketch that out because you're gonna feel so good. You're gonna feel so good to have your plan ready for January before it's even here so you can hit the ground running. You don't say, it's a new year. Oh God, what do I do? You know, I don't want you to feel that moment of like, I got so excited, but then I didn't know where to start. I want you to say, nope, I already have a plan in place. Even if I get scared, I know exactly what steps I need to take to be better, to do better, and to make this year so much better than the last one, to level up my authorship, to take my writing to the next level for my readers or to reach more readers, whatever it is you want to do. I want you to know the steps you need to do 
uh, you need to take to make that happen. All right, guys. So let's see. We are just about at the end here. I want to reemphasize the monthly and quarterly reviews. These are built into your 2022 authors planner and ultimate authorship planner, but you can always ask your AI or your smart technology or set your calendar reminders to say, hey, maybe a couple days before the end of the month or the last Sunday of the month, whatever, that you go ahead and do your monthly review, you know, end of the quarter, make sure you do your quarterly review, do some planning, look at your original goals and say, based on what's happened so far, have I moved faster than expected, slower than expected? How do I need to adjust to make sure I'm making the most of my time? I'm pursuing what matters to me. I'm making the most of this year to take my authorship to the next level. So this, these kind of reviews keep your goals from being just some mirage. I love this, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I don't want it to just be a mirage, something on the horizon, kind of just shimmery and something that looks really nice, but you feel like you're never getting there. And monthly and quarter re quarterly reviews, make sure that you're hitting those milestones or that you're adjusting your direction as much as you need to. So think about that. And I want to say to you guys, cheers to new year. This is our last slide. Has this been helpful? Let me know. Um, let me know too, if you want to be tagged in the replay so that you can watch this again with your notebook out, you can pause it where you need to um, comment in the chat, whether you enjoyed it, found it helpful. I would love to know your favorite part. Like what was the big wow for you that really got you fired up? Let me know. And then if you want to be added to a planner group chat, please PM me on Facebook because I'm going to have a little planner group chat to remind you. Okay, guys, do your weekly planning. Okay, guys, it's time for monthly review. It's time for quarterly review. How are you guys doing? So let me know if you want to be added to that chat because I've had a lot of people say, well, I get started with my planner and then it's kind of hard to stay with it. So I want to make it easy. And sometimes just having the reminder there from other people can be helpful. So um, PM me on Facebook, you guys, Audrey Hugh, you guys, hopefully you all know me on Facebook and I'm admin in, in the Sprints and Spirits and the planner group and the ATA, of course. So you should easily be able to PM me if you can't find me on Facebook. Um, Go ahead and email me, Audrey at the right services.com, and I will send you where you need to go to make sure that um, you get into the group if you wanted. <laughs> so, the, the messenger group, it's going to be Facebook Messenger because the groups, the notifi notifications are just getting lost. So, let's see. Yes, replay, replay. Awesome. Definitely re watching. Uh, improves focus. Favorite part, focusing on what's key. Love it. Erica, yes, yes. Jenny, thank you. would love to be part of the planner chat. This helped a lot. I really like sharing my top three goals in order of importance. Yes, wonderful, you guys. Thank you so much for joining. It looks like I have a baby I need to take care of. So, but um, thank you for popping on and please message me if you need anything and want to be tagged in the replay. All right, guys, I'll catch you later. Bye.